managing uh, architects, solution architects, consultants, and premier experts uh, that always needs to be on top of uh, the trends and uh, all the trends and the, that are the, the new technologies that are hitting the industry. Uh, and one of the key technologies that is bringing value to the industry, to the citizens, to the market these days is uh, machine learning and advanced analytics. So, I don't know if you're familiar with this technology. Uh, maybe you're thinking about uh, robotics, maybe you're thinking about artificial intelligence or some uh, interesting things that you've seen in Terminator. But uh, maybe to start with, um, uh, let, let's, let's see how Microsoft thinks about uh, machine learning and I think it would be, um, it would be a good start. And um, maybe to put it in a very simple way, uh, machine learning is, uh, as you can see here, computing system that becomes smarter with experience. Uh, and what do you call experience? Um, experience is past data plus human input. And past data is huge. Uh, our world is producing more and more data. It's doubling every 18 months. And computer systems are much, much better than us human beings. It's unfortunate, but they're much better at ingesting and digesting all this data and uh, at correlating many, many different variables. Uh, but we still have one thing uh, that we have on top of computers is that we can tell them what to do. And so when all this data is going through uh, machine learning, through the machine learning models, we look at the outputs and we can tell them if this is what we're expecting. And um, then, depending on that, either the computing system self addressed this is machine learning, or we have data scientists, I'll go a bit later into what we mean by data scientists, but we have data scientists that can tune the model and change the model so that actually it brings the right output. Very often we're being asked as well, but uh, is machine learning, is advanced analytics not just business intelligence and BI with a fancy name and with a nice marketing name? Uh, when you look at the screen here, I think you can see that, um, that it is not. Uh, business intelligence is a, a great tool and a great technology and a great asset to analyze the data to understand what has happened and so that you can make uh, the right decision uh, and uh, this is great and you have some very very strong performance dashboards you have nice kpi that allow you to make motivated decisions for your organizations uh, machine learning and predictive analytics and uh, advanced analytics which is a part of machine learning goes one step further first you start to predict the future and based off this huge amount of data that the, that the, the, the computer can ingest it can predict the future. Uh, and the step further is once you predict the future, then you can act upon it and you can tell the computing system to make the right decisions. Or you have the ability, the ability to make the decisions on what is going to happen, which is uh, actually a great asset and that starts to bring value. But now that's um, the high level and the conceptual view. So I'd like to bring to you uh, a couple of examples of uh, what Microsoft has been working on with a couple of customers. And um, to start with, I will start with this company, Thyssen Group Elevators. Um, Thyssen Group is one of the major uh, company that maintains elevator worldwide in uh, a lot of buildings. Uh, an elevator is a, a very old business. And elevators, most of them are very old. So I don't know about you, I look in a uh, I look in the room here and I see only very fit, healthy and sporty people. So when you go in front of an elevator and that it's down, you're actually almost happy because then you can take the stairs and make it a little bit more sports. But when I think about uh, my grandmother, she's 88 years old, she's working with a stick. It takes her 10 minutes then to take the stairs and it's very painful and she's living on the first floor. Uh, so Thyssen Group was experiencing a lot of this and a lot of these issues and their customers, which were uh, the, the, the entities and the bodies owning the buildings or the municipalities, were starting to complain about this, about this downtime. And it was costing a lot of money to Thyssen Group. A lot of money because when an elevator is down, you have to send, you have to fly, you have to get by train the maintenance engineer to look, to assess what is wrong, sometimes to go back to find the right parts and uh, to go and fix it. It was a huge cost. So Thyssen Group needed to become more competitive and they started to try to understand and investigate with us how they could make uh, a better use of, uh, of technology in order to bring value and in order to save costs. Um, so they started to envision this with us and first we connected thousands of their elevators 
with uh, devices, uh, with sensors that were checking all the parts of these elevators. And we connected them into our central platform uh, that was able to monitor real time all the elevators to see their status, their KPI, and any member of the organization from the leadership at the very high level all the way down to the regional technicians was able to see in a very, very nice dashboard what was the status of the elevators. Uh, and this was uh, BI, and this is first a great value. But then we went a step further. And based on all these um, uh, motions and all these patterns, they understood how these elevators were going down. And they were able to predict before the elevators went down when the issue was going to appear and also when the issue was going to appear. So instead of sending on a yearly basis for regular maintenance their engineers, and then in the meantime when the elevators were down, send them over, the computing system is today able to send the trigger a few weeks before they see a part that is, uh, that is almost going down uh, for the guy to go with the right part and to fix it. So a huge amount of, um, of uptime, so the downtime has been seriously significantly reduced uh, and also as you can understand a huge number of, uh, of cost decrease and a huge amount of cost decrease for this company. Um, so uh, this is, uh, as you understood, not only a machine learning, but this is machine learning m connected with what we call Internet of Things. And we have now talking elevators. We have connected elevators together with our Azure platform to monitor this real time. And uh, I will send you the link, but it's, um, uh, it's a very nice story and success story that is starting to be replicated. Now, we have many other areas where machine learning can help and those are just a few examples um, there is a, there will be a lot of topic about uh, cyber security today and monitoring network intrusions has uh, very very set patterns and uh, the cyber security group in microsoft that uh, my colleague george randolph talked about yesterday is using machine learning to analyze uh, and to predict and to see some suspicious behavior that's not the only one there is uh, some smart metering uh, for the business and the commercial uh, how to target the right offering at the right customer depending on how what question he asked which stores he went to uh, which internet pages he goes to you are able to provide a very targeted and uh, a very relevant uh, proposition to your customer um, I'd like to go to a second example that is uh, close to us and that is about fraud detection so I have to apologize to you I know there is no fraud in Georgia uh, but in all the neighboring countries uh, around it you have uh, you have some fraud happening and this uh, is about fraud in hospital uh, it's in the Croatian uh, insurance health funds uh, that we've been working and I, I will not go into too much details on the case uh, George also briefly touched upon it yesterday but it is frequent that um, or it happens that some hospitals are performing acts on the patients which has a cost where they get the money back and for some reason either by mistake or either by purpose there is a wrong coding which makes that they receive probably some more money than the, they should do um, and this is true in Croatia and this is true in many other countries we had a very good relationship with the Croatian um, health insurance fund has a zero uh, and we started to think about how can we do and what can we do to help them uh, yesterday or at least uh, a few months ago uh, there used to be some investigators looking through every single case of every single hospital and do some manual uh, looking at this it was long uh, it was cumbersome and it was not so accurate so we envisioned the idea of how can we use machine learning basically they knew the pattern they knew what matches a fraud situation and to automate this um, now we've uh, finished um, a few weeks ago uh, actually this proof of concept and we went into a very nice and uh, interesting proof of concept it is 98 percent accuracy 98 percent accuracy and probably 10 times faster than the manual investigators so we are able to identify these cases of fraud and the investigators now know exactly what to do uh, the idea of course is to save costs for uh, the administration uh, the idea is to speed up uh, the resolution time and uh, to prevent fraud at least because when the hospital understand that they're being watched and very carefully watched and very fastly watched they will not do this anymore and as the humans are very inventive and very creative when new cases of fraud happens we will tune the model in order to identify those also quite fast um, now this is going in production in the next few months uh, and uh, the Croatian Health Insurance Fund is already thinking about next steps and that they're thinking about pharmacies because pharmacies are the same kind of um, behaviors and the same kind of pattern so as you see those are two cases of um, how we can use machine learning I wanted to make um, 
quick point here on uh, maybe four roles that are important in machine learning. And as you can see, and I hope it's not too small, but I, I will try. There is four specific people and persons that are involved in the machine learning projects. Uh, first is the business expert. And the business expert is coming from uh, the organization, is coming from the administration, is coming from the customer. You know your cases, you know your issue, your challenges, and what you want to solve. Then we have the data experts, which is an IT people. Uh, again, you know your data, you know where they are, you know where they reside, and you know what sense they have. Uh, once we have these two people, then we need what we call data scientists. Those used to be very rare skills, we're getting more and more. Uh, but it can be from you, the customers, it can be from Microsoft. Of, very often it's a pair of uh, a Microsoft guy because we have data scientists available to understand what the data means, to understand the data modeling, to make some correlation and to start to program the computer in order to find and uh, to, to fine tune these models. And then there is the solution architect in order to make this platform uh, working quite well. So, um, going next. Uh, a lot of people are also asking us why machine learning and why now? Uh, this is a technology that is not new. It existed since uh, the 70s. Uh, Microsoft's first unit in machine learning started in the 90s and we're using this for identifying males, for instance. Uh, we're using this for the, for the Kinect in Xbox to detect uh, the, the motion. We're using this in Skype Translator these days as well because there are many different ways of pronouncing uh, just my name, uh, Laurent, Laurent, Laurent. So uh, to understand really and to be able to translate right, uh, this machine learning, this huge computing analysis is necessary. But so far there's been a lot of barrier to entries and uh, it's been very complex to, uh, to drive a machine learning project. First because of its cost, uh, the hardware cost, the software cost uh, was really huge and we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to just uh, set up a first machine learning project and the computing projects. Uh, the, the resources, I told you, the data scientists were also rare and very expensive resources. Now, even beyond that, when you had data scientists, they were very often limited to one organization, finance, marketing, operations, uh, and they only had siloed data on siloed system. And the whole point about machine learning is to get as many information as you can and to make some nice correlation. And this has been very, very complex because of the integrations that was not here, because of the tools to integrate that were not here as well. Uh, and now this data scientist is speaking some strange language. We call this R, we call this Python, which might not be understood by the rest of the IT community. So even when they had this model, pussy putting it to the IT sometimes necessitates some translation into a language they knew, and then they needed to provision the machine and to put it in production. So I'd say probably 90% of the machine learning project did not come to, um, come to bring business value to the customer. And now we also have to look at the world we're living in today. Uh, I heard this yesterday in, uh, in many presentations. Everything is connected 24-7. Everything is globalized. The internet is here. Uh, the cloud is here. So this is a request from the customer, from the consumer, and from the citizens to have more and more accurate information, more and more accurate data. Uh, so uh, those are a few of the reasons why, why now. Another reason why now is that there are a few solutions today that can handle machine learning in a much, much more efficient way and cost-efficient way than uh, they used to be before. Uh, one of them I know quite well, it's uh, the Azure Machine Learning, and I can tell you uh, what it is and the, the, the value it can bring you. Um, first, of course, this is this Azure technology. You do not have any software to install. You do not have any hardware to install. Uh, you can start from a web browser and uh, an Azure subscription. And you can start to model. You can start to connect to the different data sources. Uh, and if you don't have these data sources, it's also, and just to tell you why now, it is the status of, um, uh, of the IT today. And thinking about uh, Georgia, for instance, Today you have a very, very advanced e-government, and I don't know if you realize how advanced it is compared to neighboring countries or others, but connecting and having this connection today available gives a great advantage. Um, going back to, um, uh, to Azure, the modeling is made, is made very easy for a few reasons. First, we have a lot of already preset model uh, and preset algorithm that even a junior data scientist can take and start to use. Um, the community and everyone actually doing models 
for governments, for retails, for manufacturing, etc., etc., can put these models into the Azure marketplace, which means that no one starts from scratch. You can start from an already existing model. If you're a more experienced data scientist, then you can add some custom code or make your own model using R or using Python. And now, just to, to bypass and to go around these issues that we had with the language, um, the deployment is in one click. So basically, once you've taken your model, once you tune it to your business scenarios, it takes one click to deploy it as a web services. So you don't have any more issues, again, with this hardware provisioning. You don't have any issues with this language. The web service is available and can be used by the entire organization in a very fast and efficient way. Uh, so um, it, it is a great value. It goes very fast. And uh, uh, to finish, I would like to go to this sentence that you see on top. Uh, empower every people and every organization in the planet to achieve more. This is what Microsoft wants to do. This is what, as my colleague George said, uh, what the new Microsoft and the transformation uh, that Microsoft wants to leave and leave for its customers. Uh, now, when I think about machine learning, uh, typically this is clearly uh, in there. If you want to bring value to the citizens, if you want to be able to achieve more in a very fast and a very efficient way, I engage you to do that. Start to think about uh, your administration, your organization, and start to think about the key business goal that you want to resolve once you see these kinds of examples. And just test it. Go, go, to, uh, uh, go to Azure and uh, just try a model. Try a model, try to fine tune a model, uh, conduct a pilot and contract the Microsoft team if you want, and, uh, and start to bring value and to realize value. I think this is a, a new technology, but it is a very valuable technology that goes beyond what we've known and what we've done so far. On this, I would like to thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for having me here, uh, Madloba, and um, hoping to see you next year.